imagine. Welcome back to Entrepreneurship Tuesday on Why in the Morning at Y254 channel. Is where you can find us across all our social media platforms at Michelle Lashira is where you can find me. So in this particular session, uh, we are driving into an interview. Hmm? Driving into an interview that looks at the future of software development and digital marketing. Uh, when you look back, let's say in a time frame of 10 years, uh, the demand of software develop developers is growing rapidly as the internet era is here to stay in studio. I am joined by Victor Abuyo, uh, who is the CEO of Madavi Agency. And uh, particular, I have to emphasize and the, into the fact that he's very enthusi enthusiastic individual when it comes to matters pertaining to software development, uh, who strive to change the world through design, curating, and developing a digital experiences. Thank you very much, Victor, for creating time to be with us. Thank you. And I have to say, look, really, really dazzling today. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. And you look yeah. dashing. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. So starting us off, I would like to find out who is Victor Abuyo before software development happened and mm -hmm. digital marketing. Mm -hmm. ah, who is Victor Abuyo? Victor Abuyo is a, a, an introverted guy mm -hmm. who likes technology, who likes reading, mm -hmm. and is very passionate about tech and the evolving technology world. And has been so for for the longest time ever. For the longest time ever. Yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll go to that. We'll yeah. get to that. <laughs> Where did you study in school? So I studied software engineering in school at mm -hmm. the Multimedia University of Kenya. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, before that I was in Bali High School. Yeah. All right. Yeah. For someone who's watching this, and uh, of course we have already thrown in the world software development and okay. digital marketing. Okay. What does one, what sort of educational background does one require to get into the world of software development and uh, digital marketing, which is, a, I believe it's a sub uh, kind of product yes, 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 yes. from the company? Yes. So traditionally, uh, before tech took over and the digital space uh, became a thing, uh, traditionally you have to go to school, uh, take a course in software development, uh, more, more or less computer science or software engineering. Uh, then you graduate, then take a subsequent uh, course to, to actually make you certified. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, with the emergence of technology, social media, social tools, right now you can be studying software development from the comfort of your home. With YouTube, there are a lot of tutorials mm -hmm. that are offering that. Mm -hmm. And within a uh, time span of three, four months, if you, if you are consistent, you can definitely become a software developer or a digital marketer. All right, yeah. all right, interesting. Uh, one thing that uh, you will agree with me and also most of the viewers yes. and, uh, who are looking, who are checking out this particular interview, mm -hmm. when it comes to software development, yeah. coding and software development just go hand in hand. So what is coding and how is it related to software development? Yeah, and I think most people normally confuse that. Most people think coding is software development. Yes. So software development is actually a... a, a, a several processes and methodologies so normally when you're doing software development it starts from something like let's say you want a software let's just say an instance you want a software you come to me you tell me yeah, victor i want an application uh, the whole software development process starts from the time we meet i actually gather the requirements that you want the needs that you have and then i go ahead and mm -hmm. transpolate them to let's say i draw them up i say this is what michelle wants and then i share them with you into something like a statement of work then once you agree this is what you actually want now that's when the coding starts and even when the coding uh, ends and then we give it to you you have then to review the application you've done you have to do some testing mm -hmm. and then there is the post development uh, services that are being offered like maintenance ensuring the application that we've done is always up and running all of that up to the point of where the application is launched that's the so whole software development okay yeah quite a process there it is quite a process <laughs> okay can one learn how to code online but just through online by themselves 
actually one can learn how to code online. And funny thing is, even for the people that I work with at Madavi, mm -hmm. a few of them have a software development uh, mm -hmm. background, but some of them uh, learned uh, software development by themselves through uh, YouTube, and they're really, really good at it. Really? Yes. They didn't go to school. Uh, they went to school and studied something completely did, different. Oh my goodness. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's something that it's, uh, can be self taught. It's something that can be self taught as long as you have the passion for it. All right. Yeah. Speak about passion. Mm -hmm. When did you discover that you are passionate about uh, a self, uh, software development and you just uh, got into it? So it's a funny story, and I'm sure my mom is watching me <laughs> test to it. Hi, mom. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there's. The first time I was introduced to a computer was around 2004, and it wasn't ours. Mm -hmm. I'd gone to visit an aunt, and then I saw a computer, and I was super, super interested, especially with mm -hmm. the computer games. It was just intriguing how you can sit in front of a screen and then play games on it and interact with it normally. And at the end of the day, there is no one behind it. That's what I normally used to think. There are people in their computers. Mm -hmm. And then my interest grew over time. Uh, I was so much into computers, worked in several places where computers were mostly involved. I think most of the places I've worked, there was always a computer involved uh, that uh, always uh, in, informed uh, where I was going. And then the first laptop I owned, uh, mm -hmm. it was a, a Toshiba, yeah. It was a Toshiba when I was joining first year. Okay. I still have it actually. Mm -hmm. It was a Toshiba given to me by my dad. And uh, that's where I really, really learned the fundamentals of mm -hmm. software development. Mm -hmm. Actually started doing a bit of designing, a bit of web design, HTML, experimenting and all things. And that grew over time. But the first project that I did, that I can say I actually did work for someone. It was around when I was in second year. Uh, a friend reached out, had, had referred to me, because he, he always used to see me. We, we always were with him, he's called Tom. We always used to sit with him, I'm always on my computer doing things mm. like you say, what are you doing, what are you writing, like mm. you always on that. Mm. He used to tell him, I'm actually designing a website or I'm actually designing a mobile application. So after seeing all that, at some point he got, he got, he asked, someone asked him, do you know someone who can do for us a website? And immediately I came to mind and then he referred me, then went ahead with the f my first website that for a paying client. And the journey has been progressive since then. Yeah, All right, I'm just going to be like Tom right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, going to, I'm, I'm going to ask, <laughs> what does a day look like for a software developer? Because we always see you guys uh, in a, it's a, at a corner somewhere in a hoodie, you know, very busy uh, staring at you on your laptop with, or even computer. Yeah. So how does a day look like for a software developer? So uh, also something I have to add, uh, mm -hmm. uh, if we're going, uh, in software development, there are also different types of software developers. Okay. There are ones who just uh, sit down and uh, do the coding that mm -hmm. most people are normally used to. Mm -hmm. uh, no, th those are, you'll find those are someone like a developer, like a developer, an Android developer, backend developer. Uh, backend developer is one who actually does how the system will work and all that. Okay. And, and mobile developer is one who does the mobile applications, Android applications, uh, iOS applications. Mm -hmm. And then there is the software tester. Mm -hmm. So. In the day of a software developer, normally if you are hired, if you're a full-time software developer, normally in the morning you wake up, you, let's say there's a, uh, an ongoing work, you gather requirements of what needs to be done, and then draw a schema. A schema is more or less like a, like a structured diagram of mm -hmm. how the software needs to work. Mm -hmm. Uh, in a way that if I present the schema to you, if you don't have any software development uh, mm -hmm. background, you'll be able to understand it. And then this schema, I'll, come, I'll now take it and mm -hmm. then write, start writing code mm -hmm. based on, on the requirements that we need to achieve. Mm -hmm. Yes, or the needs that we need to achieve. Okay, yeah. All right. I think uh, we, we get it now. Yeah. <laughs> so let's look at uh, Madavi Agency. Mm -hmm. uh, you've been operating for three years? Three years now, yeah. Okay, so yeah. I would like to find out who or what influenced you to start a company of your own. Uh, we had earlier on when you give out your background story that your parents were actually supportive. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to find out who or what influenced you to start this, your own business, yeah. So, f for me initially it was never a business. Okay. Uh, it was just something I was doing, I was passionate about, mm -hmm. I was doing it. Uh, uh, people were approaching me, after my first client, people were approaching me, I used to do websites for them, give it to them, they pay me. Mm -hmm. 
And then at some point around now 2017, that's when I realized uh, this is something that can actually be grown full scale. It's something that can actually be pursued full time as opposed to just being a, a passion project or a side hustle. When did you discover that? That was around 2017. Okay. It was around 2017, 2017 September, if you remember mm -hmm. the month. So now I started uh, pursuing it full time because before I was just doing it on the side on the weekends and all that, but now I started doing it on the daily. So I used to balance uh, having meetings, client meetings, uh, doing the work and actually with school work. Because remember, I was, I was still in you school. You were still in school inside yes, the company? Yes, I was still in school, okay. yeah. So it used to be like that. And then at some point I realized uh, this is something that I can't do it alone. Mm -hmm. So I approached my friends. Mm -hmm. uh, they yeah, became part of, by then it was still called Auratech. We mm -hmm. rebranded recently, it was still called Auratech. Mm -hmm. uh, they became part of the company. And then now we started going ahead, looking for clients and uh, executing projects. And I realized now that when, if you're working with a team, it becomes easier to go for those full bigger projects and then you can execute them on time. And then the fact that you guys are several minds in a room, mm -hmm. everyone has an idea that at the end of the day you realize actually my way, my suggestion was wrong, let's follow this or bring heads together, you actually come up with a better, more efficient product. Okay. Yeah. Speaking about products and having a team, I'm so sure there are other uh, certain branches that the company, when, when it comes to uh, what the software development company deals with, yeah. I'd love to find out the services that Madavi Agency offers. Okay, okay. So at the core, Madavi Agency offers custom software development. Mm -hmm. This is by we companies approach us or we approach them. Mm -hmm. We try to check how they are operating. And they've been, let's say companies have been doing it for a long time and mm -hmm. they're still doing things manually. Mm -hmm. So we try to get that process. And then from that, try to draw up, to scheme up a, a software that can actually enable them to to ease, and how, to ease how they do their services or their processes. And from accounting to HR and all that, then we design a custom tailored uh, product for them. That's one of the services. Another thing is web design. We mostly, we are really, really passionate about design as a team and how design influences uh, how people use applications and uh, software products. So we, we do web design also for web design as a service. Uh, we also do mobile application development, that's in line with custom software development. And then last but not least, we offer uh, search engine optimization, or rather digital marketing, whereby people come to us, yes, we've done the products, yeah. it's live, now what mm -hmm. next? How do we ensure people actually see this product? And how, how do we ensure people actually come, interact with this product, and still go ahead, continue interacting with it in the long term? Okay. So the last, the last uh, service the digital marketing normally comes after all these other processes are done. Oh, right. yeah, yeah. Would you say the digital marketing uh, part uh, came after uh, you You guys discovered we're doing search engine optimization yes. so we can actually get into digital marketing? Yes. So d the digital marketing service came at a later date because we realized yes we are offered we tell people we do design centric uh, software websites right but after that if I give you an application that's really, really well designed, it's looking really, really good, how do you ensure people actually go ahead and appreciate or use that product? Oh, yes. So now that's when you go optimize it on search engines, popular search engines like Google, you optimize it on, on the social media channels, Facebook, Instagram, and the rest. And after that, still digital marketing, once people go to it, you can be able to analyze and see if people are coming, which services are they interacting with, which parts are they interacting with, and how can we make that better. Mm -hmm. So it still brings about the software development process being an ongoing process. Makes also. lots of sense, yeah. absolutely, <laughs> it does. <laughs> okay, um, on products, have there been a situation whereby you're, you came up with a product mm -hmm. and it got rejected or yeah. it got stuck and it never came to life? That has happened a lot of times. Yeah, it's, okay. it's happened a lot of times. You normally find uh, you come, a client come to us, client mm -hmm. comes to us, they tell us we want this and this and this. And uh, we think, or we try to think, uh, this is what they want, but in real sense they want something else. And then you go ahead and uh, design a product. Mm -hmm. Then once we present it to them, even our website, when we present it, they're like, no, this is completely different mm -hmm. from what I had in mind. And then you have to redo. There are times we've redone uh, a website like four times. 
four times. Yeah, like four times, because there was not that clear requirements. So, but from that we learned. So normally how we do it nowadays is, mm -hmm. before we even start the coding part, uh, we try to have as many sessions uh, with you as with possible. Exactly, mm -hmm. just try to understand what it is you want. We try to present it to you, like from our understanding, uh, give you a document like this is what you said you want. Is it in line with what you want? If there are changes, we make them. So by the time we are starting this actual development process, everything has been cleared, everything is good to go. Because it really, software development process is a complex process as it, as it is. So if you keep on redoing it, at mm -hmm. some point you just get tired, yeah. <laughs> it requires lots of patience. It requires a <laughs> lot of patience. That's why you see most software developers work at night. Mm, yeah, yeah. Okay. So there's a very big drive towards pushing the young people uh, into setting up applications mm -hmm. that can offer solutions for the society. Okay. Uh, where are we as a country? Uh, are we making substantial headway or not? Yes and no. Yes, in the sense of uh, there has been really uh, a, an embrace. People have really embraced technology as it comes, and mm -hmm. this is from cutting across all age groups. Mm -hmm. uh, people nowadays have seen the, the need to use technology mm -hmm. uh, to in their day-to-day -day lives. Mm -hmm. And no, because now that we have that, a lot of people also think uh, Every, every problem we have as a country, as a society, mm -hmm. it can be solved by technology. And when you say technology, I'm thinking about the software and the rest. So you normally find nowadays there's a lot of, uh, in the market, there's been a lot of applications put out, there's been a lot of systems put out mm -hmm. that are solving problems, for lack of a better word, that don't exist. Mm -hmm. So I come and say, ah, this is a problem. Mm -hmm. Then immediately I think I need to come up with an app for this. But how we do as Madavi, how Madavi plugs into that. Whenever we meet with someone who wants to come up with a solution, we try to understand what they need. And then we also advise. Uh, advisory success is also one of the biggest things we do. We also advise uh, based on the problem that you have, the solution that you need to provide, mm -hmm. this will not work for you, mm -hmm. but this will work for you based on one, two, three, and this will, will not work for you. Based we also we give them the merits and the demerits. Okay. So at the end of the day, someone might come to us, they want a mobile application for doing a, a certain, for solving a certain problem, but then you tell them the best solution for you is not a mobile application, but rather something like USSD, and then we outline why the need for that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I'm almost sure that you'll agree with me when I say that uh, um, majority of international organization, they, mm -hmm. they seek to work with uh, uh, software developers in Kenya yeah. just to come up with a groundbreaking uh, technology and uh, do you feel like in in our country we uh, this deficiency when it comes to uh, promoting or just uh, holding hand uh, holding hand our software developers that is that has been uh, the challenge for the longest time but uh, I feel that it has been slowly changing mm -hmm. mm. Right now, you still find, yes, it's very, very hard to, to get uh, help, uh, let's sufficient help, something like a financial advisory kind of help from institutions, let's say like the government. It's still, the conversation is still not yet there. But the good thing is, there have been other institutions that are coming in, in Kenya, they're investing in Kenya uh, to actually uh, help that process. Like, for instance, when you're, uh, if I may give an example, uh, we recently got uh, contacted by there's a Poland agency that uh, from Poland, it's a Polish agency. Okay. It links uh, software development companies uh, from Kenya with software mm -hmm. development companies uh, in Poland. Because right now Poland is actually the best software development hub in the whole world. It actually uh, gives, uh, does products for all even these big tech companies. So you find something like that. You find as Madavi, we get con if we get access to that, it's easier because you are being introduced to world standards, world practices, how you need to develop software, how, what, standard, what guidelines do you need to follow, and all that, which means at the end of the day, you can come up with a better software that's just not uh, for Kenyan people, mm -hmm. but for the for the global, uh, for the global, for the global world. All right. Yeah. Uh, you run a company that you build uh, from from scratch, looking yeah. back, would you say that uh, we have a good ecosystem that uh, uh, nurtures innovation? 
Yes, you do. Right. And I know a lot of people will disagree with me, but okay. yes, you do. It's, uh, for me, we find that uh, when I started out, I thought it's something bad that I'll do alone. But along the way, I realized uh, having a team behind you, having a people that you work with, people you can consult, mm -hmm. is actually one of the biggest achievements you can have, mm -hmm. not even clients. If you have the best team working with you, it means even getting certain jobs, it becomes easier. Mm -hmm. And then something we've also realized uh, when I told you like nowadays, uh, Kenyan companies have started embracing uh, technology, internal technology, the conversation is still not yet there, is uh, nowadays the kind of companies you get approached to for work, for consultancy work, for development work, they mostly focus on the team. So like, who do you have on board? How, how do you communicate? Do you have an enhanced relationship uh, just after, be after work? Like, how do you guys engage and all that? So yes, we, we, ha we have that ecosystem. I can say that. Uh, you just need to know where to look to, to look to where to focus on, yeah. Mm. What has been the ex what, are, what has been your experience when it comes to offering uh, uh, solutions that uh, for the local market? That mm. is, yeah. Uh, two things actually. First of all, it's pricing. Okay. Uh, this uh, most people, individuals, and I can't just blame it on them, haven't yet understood the need for software projects or the need for software in their operations to use the operations and the ones that do actually mm -hmm. think because uh, people just see developers as mm -hmm. something they're doing as a passion project mm -hmm. so they normally assume you can get paid peanuts for it right wow yeah so you'll find someone mm -hmm. uh, you give them a quote and then their counter proposal is like a tenth of that quote you're like, how do you even start this conversation? Really? Exactly, exactly. I thought, there's someone who actually tell you in your face, I thought this was quite cheap. I didn't know it, it could go this expensive. Mm -hmm. But you're like, this is the services that I'll be offering. It's just not software development or mm -hmm. coding uh, at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. I'm offering you these other services because uh, my biggest uh, achievement is not getting paid by you, mm -hmm. but actually seeing I've done a product for you that actually helps you, that actually helps your consumers and the rest of the people. So pricing as it is, it's still a big, big uh, challenge. All right. Yeah. And uh, the other thing I will say, uh, collaborations or cohesion, there's still that individualism, especially mm -hmm. even in software development, you mm -hmm. find if we are doing this, you're, you're another company, it's mm -hmm. very hard for us to collaborate with you and tell you uh, these are the services we offer, you can do this and this and this. It's like individualism because people still think uh, we will get your clients or something of the sort. Okay, yeah. Yeah. and speaking about uh, pricing and all that, I was I was reading uh, a book, or rather, uh, yeah, it was a book. Mm -hmm. so I, saw, I saw a video somewhere. Yeah. It was a book, and uh, they, was, they were stating that there's still in Kenya, in our country, that they, there's no proper uh, strategy when it comes to pricing for mm -hmm. software developers. Mm -hmm. And my question was, so what happens if I'm a software developer, of course, mm -hmm. and uh, I offer the same similar services that you would offer at a cheaper price? So how, how do you guys curb that? because now I'm offering the same product at a cheaper price and my, your client may decide, you know, otherwise. I think that's also a challenge because at the end of the day, if a client gets five proposals mm -hmm. for what he needs to get done mm -hmm. and three of those proposals are charging something like X amount of money and then two of them are charging 10X, mm -hmm. definitely he will feel for the other, for the two companies, he's being overcharged. Mm -hmm. But the real sense is that's actually the market price. But you'll find for these other people, because software development is so, digital marketing is so easy to get into, mm -hmm. uh, most people get into it uh, to make money on the side, but they don't take time to actually see how much do I need to charge, and when I'm charging, do, am I offering quality service? Mm -hmm. So that's what you'll find for most companies, even uh, sometimes you get approached for people to, to redo their applications after they've gone live because the first person charged them and uh, charged them and then did uh, very bad work so they need to get it done again. You'll find especially now in the market, there are a lot of bad products done 
uh, people don't follow those uh, software development guidelines, people don't follow those uh, design guidelines on how you need to design a product. Mm -hmm. It's just that you want an application, okay, mm -hmm. I can do it for you for this amount of money, pay me, I deliver it to you. Okay. Yeah. So that, that, does that mean that we lack, uh, in, in the software industry, does that mean that there's lack of IT policy that uh, can provide a strategic direction uh, when it comes to matters of IT? Yes, at the moment uh, they lack that uh, uh, comprehensive framework mm -hmm. that actually uh, covers uh, software development, uh, how it needs to be done, what's the pricing you need to get and all that. And I've, I've, uh, due to the different kind of work we do, mm -hmm. I've interacted with lawyers and I've also seen there's actually a framework that is imposed in place. So like a lawyer will be told uh, if you're doing company registration, don't charge below this mm -hmm. but when it comes to software development there is no that there is nothing like that at all mm -hmm. so i will charge you first of all if if i'm a freelancer i will think okay how much is my rent how much is my food mm -hmm. and then i do a total and then i charge you that amount you see because i'm thinking it's something that i'll my turnaround time is quite quick mm -hmm. yeah okay mm -hmm. uh we have multinationals and also kenyan corporates mm -hmm. uh who tend to buy uh, software international, internationally mm -hmm. and they shy away for just believing in Kenyan talents. Yes. What has been your challenge in this particular situation whereby most of, most of corporates in the country tend to seek help from you know, international uh, organization when it comes to software development? Yeah, we've had a couple of those. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I remember just as, there's this one time a client approached to us, he, was, he needed a, a software to automate his processes. We gave him a quote and then he didn't actually on board because okay. uh, he told us, first of all, you're expensive. And then I don't feel comfortable with your capabilities mm -hmm. as a company because uh, he looked at us, actually, uh, Madavi, Madavi team is quite young. I think the average age is around 27. It's quite young. So he looked at her like, I don't think you guys are capable of doing this. Uh, keeping in my, mind you, you've been doing it for a, quite a while. And he went ahead and got the same software uh, for 10 times the price from an outsource. He outsourced from India. And later he started having challenges with the software, some parts were not working and because the support was not as uh, fast from the other end, he started, he, he came back to us and like, mm. can I engage you on this and this and this. So in totality, most, most companies still haven't yet appreciated, most companies still feel uh, outsourced software, outsourced goods are still of better quality and all that. And not remembering probably those economies have been mature for longer than us. But for us to get to that level, there needs to be that support, there needs to be that consistency, there needs to be that local appreciation of local goods. Right. Yeah. And it's very easy when you actually get to work with someone from home. Exactly. They get to understand you, custom made, custom make whatever you want for your product. Exactly. For us, you'll find Madhavi and something that we really, really pride in. For, for the clients that you have, for the people you've worked with, our relationship goes beyond the work that we do. We try to establish a cohesive relationship because I know if you're a client, uh, uh, it becomes easier uh, engaging with you even when you want to add other features on the product that you have. Mm -hmm. It becomes easier having with us a conversation because we've cultured that relationship. Okay. So, which is not offered by most external companies and uh, we are not yet there, that's oh, what I'm saying, yeah. Okay. Let's look at uh, um, companies' achievements. Three mm. years down the road, Ooh, yeah. Madavi Agency. Yeah. Actually, it just looks like yesterday. Mm -hmm. So we've had uh, challenges and achievements. Uh, achievements, we've, and it's something really, really good. We've been referred a couple of times, mm -hmm. and we've worked on projects. We've worked with companies that we never thought we will work with within okay. the three years that we've been in business. Mm -hmm. We've worked with some huge companies. Mm -hmm. I won't say the names because of non-disclosures and all that, mm -hmm. but we've worked with some big companies. And uh, also that exposed us to a different kind of uh, environment, to a different kind of interaction. Because mm -hmm. these companies are used to working to on a standard level. Mm -hmm. So within our interaction, you actually, you realize we need to 
change our processes, we need to align this, we need to be become better at this. It's been really, really good. We've also worked with some multinationals and uh, provided services for them. And it's something we are hoping Madavi will be the epitome of that in the, in the near future. Okay. Yeah. When it comes to digital marketing, mm -hmm. apart from the search engine operation, what other services do you offer on that, on that landscape of digital marketing? So we also do paid media, mm -hmm. uh, whereby we buy ads for you to actually improve your ranking, to actually bring in visitors to, to your site. We also do, uh, uh, what's the name, community management. That's so why we are on top of your pages, we do the posting, we check on people who are interacting with your pages, what queries are coming in, how can we be able to engage them with that, and just push out your services as, as a company, uh, push out your com uh, services, get more people to know about you, and uh, streamline that engagement with your prospective clients on your, on your, on your socials, yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in our time frame of three years, what are a couple of the challenges that sh the company has gone through mm -hmm. and how did you, and how are you guys maneuvering through? Okay. Yeah. Uh, the biggest challenge, I would say, sometimes it becomes really, really hard mm -hmm. to, to get projects done. And it was a, a challenge we had initially because you're desperate for, for work. Uh, you come to us and tell you, ah, Michelle, you want to turn up. Let me do it 50% uh, halfway in before you make a deposit. And as a business, that really, really affects your cash flows because you realize there's other things that the a business a company does uh, aside from service delivery that needs to ensure it's running all through. So once your cash flows are... Uh, uh, you delay your cash flows, it becomes harder to, to move on these other things. And then you can do a project halfway. Initially, we didn't used to have contracts. So you'll come to us, you are hyped about the product that you want to do. Like, let's do it, start doing it. And then halfway in, you're like, nah, I've changed my mind. And then it's our loss. Yeah. And because you don't have any legal agreement uh, okay. that governs the work you're doing, mm -hmm. the conversation just ends there. So. Learning on the job, that's something we've been doing and uh, knowing how to, to align processes, knowing how to, apart from the work that you're doing, how do you ensure this thing doesn't affect us if things go haywire. Mm -hmm. And another ch major challenge we've had, uh, though it was something initially but we managed to get over it, mm -hmm. the cohesiveness of the team. Mm -hmm. The team is a very, very fundamental aspect to it, the co cohesiveness of, of a team. So you'll find that. Uh, and the team we have, we have uh, night owls, people who work at night, we have people who work during the day. So getting these two people together to work at the same time and uh, still meet deadlines, it was a huge, huge challenge. But it's something we got over it as time went by and uh, so far so good. All right. Yeah. So what makes Madavi the partner of choice uh, when it comes to offering software development solutions? We, we are really, really focused on uh, giving you top niche services mm -hmm. and uh, uh, more or less like we focus on as Michelle, as a Michelle's company, what is it that you really, really need to get out, right? Yes, you are approaching us on a development uh, perspective. You want us to do a, a product for you, but we think long term. We think if we do this product for Michelle and then you give it to her, how will she push it out? Mm -hmm. So we normally uh, try to handle the process from the word go mm -hmm. and uh, ensure whatever we do for you just doesn't uh, benefit us in terms of uh, uh, being uh, compensated, but it also benefits you in terms of how you use it, in terms of how people engage with it, and in terms of how it will be relevant in the next two, three years down the line. So our customer engagement, our customer service, it's really, really key. And it's something that we really, really try to, to focus on. Oh, yeah. So your niche is on the, on the service provision. Exactly. Okay. What, do, what does the future of Madavi agency look like in a long time, on, mm. in a long time space here? That is? Uh, our vision is in the next few years mm -hmm. to, to have done to have streamlined mm -hmm. the software space in the Kenyan market. Mm -hmm. And when I say streamlined the software space in the Kenyan market, a lot of companies in Kenya are still having, are still using outsourced system, and most of them are still having challenges. Because you normally find uh, 
you bring in a system from India, from the US, and then you have to take like three months just to take your stuff through it, to get them to onboard and learn, and for them to actually use the so system. That's so much of a hassle. It's so much work, yeah, I yeah. understand. It's so much of a hassle. So <laughs> with my dad's virtual planning, what we've been doing, mm -hmm. and uh, based on how we deliver our services, is uh, streamline the software space in the terms of whatever uh, software, whatever systems that people use, uh, to automate the business processes uh, align with their company culture. When I say that, I mean we come in, we look at how your staff works, how your people work, and then try to make a system that fits into their daily uh, routine without changing anything about them, but just make sh ensure their performance, their work processes are being more efficient and done faster. Okay. Yeah. And uh, the plan is within five years, to have gotten a cr have like a seventy percent market share. Great, yeah. that is so great. Mm. I would like to find out as a founder, mm -hmm. and uh, you being a leader, and um, just having people who who you work, you get to work with. Mm -hmm. And I'm so sure you didn't have a clear roadmap when starting mm -hmm. off. No one has. <laughs> <laughs> what are a couple What are a couple of lessons that you have learned along the way uh, while starting uh, this particular business? That is. Uh, for I have actually have three. Okay, let's look at the major, yes, the three. major three. So the first three is uh, be good at what you do. And I say be good at what you do, I don't mean uh, the type of service you deliver. Just be good at what you do in terms of communication. How do you communicate to the people that you provide the service to? How do you ensure whatever needs to be done is done on time? How do you ensure you give feedback on time? How do you ensure you en enhance that relationship between your, the people that you're working with, within your, between you and your clients, between you and your partners? Just be good at what you do. The second thing, have a really, really good team. Have people you actually understand, people you actually can be able to rely on. Because mm -hmm. you'll find at times, uh, I'm not in the office and uh, there needs to be work to be executed, but I know if I call someone, he's reliable, at least he'll be able to, to get it out of the way without me then without me delaying the timeline that need to be to be delivered. And the last thing is have mentors. Have mentors, people who can guide you, people who can tell you this is the right direction to take, this is the this is the wrong direction to take. Have people you look up to, have people you normally consult with on a, a regular basis and people who've been there before you because it makes the journey so easy. It makes the journey so easy. It makes you avoid some loopholes that you'll have gotten into, but you don't because you learn from other people's mistakes. Okay. Yeah. Looking back, mm -hmm. three years now, do you regret it? Not a single day. <laughs> <laughs> have, you been, uh, uh, have you been hit by the COVID-19? It, it has hit all industries, yeah. definitely. Yeah. But how has COVID-19 affected this particular business? So... With Madavi, initially when uh, COVID-19 came, I think everyone uh, freezed their assets, everyone mm. put everything on standstill. Mm. So we also got affected. Mm -hmm. It was a huge impact on us. Uh, I realized well, some clients, we offer them services on a regular intervals, month to month basis. Some of them we do consultancy services to them. But because their businesses were affected, it meant also our businesses had to be affected in one way or another because some uh, discontinued services and all that. But uh, three, four months down the line, people realized they need to go online, they need to, to be digital, especially for businesses that are, are fully reliant, fully operational, f away from the digital space. That's so true. people realized the need for that and we started having a lot of queries coming in, people interested in how as a company, how to ensure I still offer my products and services uh, in the digital space. So it picked up uh, uh, in, uh, progressively and so far so good. So in every chaos, there's an opportunity. In every chaos, there's an opportunity. All right. <laughs> What's the future of software development? In the Kenyan market, it's going to be revolutionary. It's going to be revolutionary. Because as I look right now, uh, each and every other day, people realize businesses have, have been operational for the last 30, 40 years, realize 
whatever we've been doing, uh, it's so time consuming. It's so it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of resources, and there is need to, to be automated. So within the next 20, 30 years, everything we do will be automated. Everything will be automated. And that for the software development, it means there is opportunity to, to tap into, and also there is need to learn. Because one thing I didn't notice, software development is a very uh, proactive and dynamic field. So whatever works today in the next two years will be something outdated. New, exactly. Something new came so out. you need to be always on the forefront, getting to know what's new and whatever is new, will it work for us or do you just need to, to disband it away? So it's quite, quite dynamic. So as a software development company, you find your challenges are not just acquiring clients, but also remaining on the forefront of using the latest tools and technologies to ensure your service delivery is the best among your competitors. All right. Yeah. Or you'll be outdated you in the market. definitely be outdated, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. What would be your advice for someone who is watching this? So it could be a young person who wants to get into business or a young person who lost their job mm -hmm. or they're just out of school mm -hmm. and um, they're, looking, they're looking forward to just start their business. Mm -hmm. What would be your advice? It doesn't have to be in the software industry. It could be mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in any other industry. What would be your advice to that person? So for me, and uh, I know this doesn't align with most people, especially okay. even my parents. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, I would advise, uh, if you're passionate about something, try it out. Uh, go for it, try it out, see how far it goes. Uh, if it, uh, it culminates into something big full time, well and good. If it doesn't, at least you took the time to do it and learn and not have regrets. As you normally find a lot of people, 20 years, 30 years my senior, they're telling me, if I, if I could go back in time, I wish I did this something different. But they can't do that. So as a young person, especially if you're in your early 20s, uh, in your teens, if there's something you're passionate about, this is the time you have, you're still young, you, you can be able to make mistakes. Don't shy away from making mistakes. This is the time, go for what you want. If it works out, well and good. If it doesn't, it is a learning tried. process. Yeah. Yes, so yeah. I think that's a very good advice yeah. that you shared uh, with our viewers back at home. Thank you very much, Victor, for creating time to be with us. Thanks I'd like so you to much. share your social media handles for mm -hmm. the company mm -hmm. and um, also the website on how people can reach out to you. Yeah. Okay, so for us, uh, you can reach us at Madavi. Uh, our our social, hinder, social media handles rather across all the channels, uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, uh, is Madavi Agency. Our website, we have two websites. Uh, you can either get us uh, via madavi.co and also via madavi.co.ke. I would really, really suggest you check out our website because we normally provide a lot of insights uh, on our blog. We normally just uh, give insights from our team on how you can use design to, auto, to enable you to have better mobile applications, how you can use how you can make your businesses, business processes easier. So check it out. Even if you want to buy it right now, it's definitely something that will really, really help you.